In this video, I'll show you a fairly straightforward way to combine two or more images into a new composite image. I'm using Affinity Photo 2.0.4. I'll be taking a somewhat realistic approach, so the images I've selected to combine share the same perspective. That's to say, if one image is looking down from above, the second will be looking down at a similar angle. And if one looks straight on, the other will look straight on also. You don't have to do the same, of course. Anything goes. With the first image, we'll combine two complete photos, and in the second, we'll select out an element of one and introduce it into the other. Here's the background of what will be our first composite. We'll superimpose this portrait on top and blend it into the background, integrating the two photos. Let's copy this photo. Press Command-C or Control-C in Windows, or choose Copy from the Edit menu. We'll switch to our background photo, and press Command-V or Control-V in Windows to paste the portrait, or choose Paste from the Edit menu. Select the Move tool so we can easily resize it. Let's zoom out a bit so we can see better. Press Command minus or Control minus in Windows. Grab a corner of our portrait and drag it out so it's bigger than the background photo. This is to avoid having the edges of the portrait visible within the background image. Press Command or Control zero to restore the default view. Now to position the portrait, let's first reduce its opacity to about 50% so we can see how it looks in relation to the background. That looks good about there. We can bring the opacity back up. As you can see, our portrait is black and white while our background is, well, bluish. We want the portrait to have similar lighting and color to the background. Fortunately, that's pretty easy to do. Let's turn off the portrait layer and select the background or cloud layer. Now duplicate the layer by pressing Command-J or Control-J in Windows. We're going to tell Affinity to calculate the average color of the layer and fill it with that color, so we'll end up with a solid fill. Now from the Filters menu, choose Blur and then Average. The layer has been replaced with a dull, dark, bluish color. Let's turn the portrait layer back on. Now drag the new Averaged Color layer above the portrait layer, and let's change its blend mode. Normally we'd use soft light, but this will make the portrait layer too translucent for our purposes. So we'll set the blend mode to overlay, which looks like a better match in any case. It is a bit darker, but we can fix that in a minute. I'm going to merge these two layers into one, so I don't have too many layers cluttering things up. First turn off the cloud or background layer. From the layer menu, select Merge Visible. This will merge all the visible layers into one layer. We want to keep the cloud layer separate. That's why we turned it off to make it invisible. Select the average color layer and holding down the shift key, select our old portrait layer. Now click on the trash can at the bottom here to delete them. Turn the background layer back on. Select the top layer which contains our portrait and set its blend mode to overlay. Now we're getting somewhere. Her face is very dark, so let's set a brightness and contrast adjustment to brighten it up. Click the adjustments icon down here at the bottom and select brightness and contrast. We only want to brighten the portrait, not the background. So we'll make the brightness and contrast adjustment a child layer of the portrait layer. This will limit its effects to the portrait layer only. Grab the Brightness and Contrast Adjustment layer with the mouse and drag it over the Portrait layer until its thumbnail becomes highlighted and release it, like so. Expand the Portrait layer by clicking the small greater than sign to reveal the Brightness and Contrast Adjustment indented beneath. 
de-indentation visually identifies it as a child of the portrait layer. Now let's adjust the brightness and contrast a bit. Okay, we can close that. We only want her face brightened. To limit the effects of the brightness and contrast adjustment to her face, we'll apply an empty mask to it. This will render the entire effect of the brightness and contrast adjustment invisible, but we'll use a white brush to paint in the adjustments effect on her face only. So click the mask icon at the bottom here and select Empty Mask. Now drag the empty mask over the brightness and contrast adjustment until its thumbnail becomes highlighted and release it. Expand the brightness and contrast adjustment to reveal the empty mask beneath and make sure it's selected. Select the paintbrush tool. Now click on the brushes tab over here. Select masking from the drop down. And let's select a soft brush. Those are the ones with a soft fuzzy outline. Hard brushes have a sharp outline. We'll choose this one. Click on the layers tab so we can see our layers again. Change the brush color to white by clicking up here. Ensure opacity and flow are both 100% and hardness is zero. Now we're going to paint over her face. Adjust the size of the brush with the square bracket keys if need be and start painting. Okay, let's click on the brightness and contrast adjustment and increase the brightness a little more. All right, that's looking pretty good. I don't like this white cloud here, so let's get rid of it. If we turn the background or cloud layer off and on, we can see that it contains the offending content. We'll apply a mask to that layer. We won't use an empty mask in this case because it would make the entire layer invisible and we would have to do a lot of painting with a white brush to allow the parts we want to be visible to show through. A mask by contrast will leave the entire layer visible, allowing us to use a black brush to remove only the areas we don't want, which is just the white cloud by your face, saving us a lot of work. Select the background layer and then click the mask icon and select the mask. Let's expand the background layer by clicking the little greater than sign to reveal the mask beneath. Make sure the mask is selected and select the paintbrush tool if it isn't already selected. Set its color to black up here. Adjust the size of the brush with the square bracket keys. Now let's paint out the cloud by her face. If you make a mistake, you can change the brush color to white to undo your mistake. We'll paint all around her hair. And let's paint on her face as well to bring it out more. Okay, looking good. Let's brighten up the entire image. Click the adjustments icon and select curves. Make sure the curves adjustment is at the top of the layer stack because we want it to affect the entire image. Now let's brighten up our image. That's about right. This image is a tad frightening, perhaps, but a beautiful young lady. Here's the background of our last composite. We'll extract this young man and put him in front of our city skyline. This will not be a simple background replacement, but you can think of it that way. In order to extract the young man, we have to select him first. We'll use the selection brush tool. 
Make sure Add Mode is turned on up here. The button should be indented. When Add Mode is turned on, every time we paint with our brush, we're adding to our selection. The opposite is Subtract Mode, which is this button here. Clicking on that will cause the selection brush to remove areas of selection. It's handy for undoing a mistake. Make sure Snap to Edges over here is turned on. This will save us some work. Let's adjust the brush size and start painting on our subject to select it. Our rough selection is done. Let's click Refine up here on the Context toolbar to clean up our selection. Selected areas look normal while unselected areas are shaded in red. Let's zoom in by holding down Command or Control and tapping the plus key. We have four adjustment brushes, matte, foreground, background, and feather. We won't be using feather. Use matte to paint around the edges of a selection to give Affinity a chance to improve it. Use foreground to select an area and background to unselect an area. Right now, let's use background to unselect this area here. Let's set it to foreground. We want to make a precise selection since he'll be placed in front of a contrasting nighttime scene. So we'll go all around the subject refining the selection. I'll finish this and see you in a second. Okay, our selection is done. Press Command or Control Zero to restore the default view. Let's click Apply. Our subject is selected. Now we'll just copy and paste them into our background image. Press Command or Control C or select Copy from the Edit menu to copy the subject. Let's switch to our background image and press Command or Control V or select Paste from the Edit menu to paste in our subject. Let's use the Move tool to resize and position the subject. That looks good right there. As with our first photo, we want to match color and lighting. Our subject was taken from a daytime scene and placed into a nighttime scene. So we'll take the average color of the city backdrop and apply it to our subject. Turn off the subject layer and select the city skyline layer. Press Command J or Control J to duplicate it. From the filters menu, choose blur and then average. We want to apply this averaged color to the subject only. Let's turn our subject layer back on. Now grab the new averaged color layer and drag it over the subject layer until its thumbnail is highlighted. And then move it slightly to the left until the entire subject layer is selected. The subject should be completely replaced with the solid color like so. And release the mouse. Expand the subject layer and ensure the average color layer is selected. Let's set its blend mode to soft light. That looks great. The lighting and color match very well. I want to merge the subject and average color layer into one layer to avoid clutter. I'll turn off the city skyline layer and select merge visible from the layers menu. I'll select the old subject layer and delete it by clicking on the trash can. The average color layer will be deleted also since it's the child of the old subject layer. Okay, let's turn the city skyline layer back on. Now let's brighten up the subject. 
Let's add a brightness and contrast adjustment and apply it to the subject layer. Let's take the brightness way up, around 55%. We're after a shiny, glowing effect. And adjust contrast a bit too. Further to that end, let's give the subject an outer glow. Select the subject layer and click the FX icon down here. Select outer glow on the left and place a check mark beside it. On the right, let's turn the radius and the intensity up. Let's set the color of the glow to a very light blue. Click color. Okay. We'll do something similar to the city skyline. Add a curves adjustment and apply it to the city skyline layer. Set the blend mode to screen. I think we can make the subject glow even more. Let's add another curves adjustment and apply it to the subject's layer. Let's set the blend mode to add. That's too intense, so we'll lower the opacity. Maybe around 45%. Looking good. Let's bring out the cyan of his jacket for a more electric look. Add a selective color adjustment and apply it to the subject's layer. Selective color allows us to make adjustments to a single color in isolation. From the drop down, select cyans. We'll only adjust the top slider here by sliding it to the right. That's fine right there. The background doesn't quite match, so let's open up the curves adjustment we applied to the background layer and try setting its blend mode to add instead of screen. That looks better. And we're done. You can use the basic approaches outlined in this video as a starting point to creating your own composite images. Give them a try and have some fun. Thanks for watching.